So what we're going to do, we're going to roast an old short film of mine. So as I've been getting more into narrative filmmaking, I thought that I could go back and kind of see the progress I've made as a filmmaker, making short films over the past few years, writing a feature film. And it's insane how we are as creators and artists, how we grow so much. And I thought it'd be a fun experiment to go back and look at an old short film that I've made for YouTube that maybe you've already seen. It's called Goodbye Kiss. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to roast it. We're going to go through it and we're going to watch it and I'm going to pick out the things that bothered me about it or that I thought would make it a much stronger film overall to this day. I've actually even shot some more stuff for the film in order to make it more cohesive and have less of an ambiguous ending. So we'll talk about that more as we get into it. But if you haven't seen the film, I think for time's sake, you should go watch the film now on your own, digest it, how I originally released it a few years ago. And, uh, and then know that, watch that, and then immediately watch this video going into it. And I'm going to break it down as we get into it. And that way you don't have spoilers and you can watch it for what it is. I can't remember exactly when I made this. According to my documents here, my export was on July 7th of 2021. I made this film for almost no money. I had my friends come in and help me make it. Um, and really it's one of the films that I'm most proud of. And I think it was like one of the first ones I made for the channel where I took it seriously and actually learned about writing and stuff like that. It's an eight minute film. And I think I like it most out of the like four short films that I made after is because this one feels the most like me tonally. Like it's kind of dark and moody, mysterious, kind of cosmic-y, kind of fantasy almost a horror film, you know? So I think it's just what I was really into at the time. And, um, I just think it, it fits well. And I also acted in this film because I was just learning at this time. I didn't have actors in the pipeline yet. I hadn't really worked with actors that much at this level. So I just acted it myself. Me and my wife both did actually. Um, so you got to bear with that, you know, because we're not actors by trade by any means. Um, so that is what it is. This was just a test film anyways. So uh, let's uh, let's jump into it. This was all sh this was all shot in the Blackmagic Pocket 6K and Canon FD lenses. Here we are um, just doing a digital zoom to save time. We had a water hose. I did a whole behind the scenes on this on this film. You can go watch all of that. I have a whole playlist. I'll link it below, um, and you can watch that. But we're gonna kind of skim through this. I actually really like most of these shots here at the beginning. Um, uh, the 24 millimeter FD looks really fun. I wish there were some better sound effects on this spot. So we'll talk about, about both technical and um, storytelling techniques in this. I wish I had a medium shot here, but otherwise I really like these close-ups. Um, I wish I... I think there it would have been nice if I would have actually said something. I just kind of waved my hand if I would have actually said, okay, goodbye, or something like that. There's a lot of stuff from a screenwriting standpoint that I learned from this because I had just... This really my first, like official script, which I was trying my hardest to, you know, build subtext in the scene rather than him just telling him what he's going to do with it. He's, you know, he's mysterious about it. He's talking about the purpose of it. I like this scene. Hard thing about this scene was doing the ADR. I just, the, the audio just did not turn out with the fake rain behind me. Um, and so I did it later in post and I just could never get the audio levels right. And so this was really a bummer. So I re-uploaded it to Vimeo with like a little bit of a louder audio track. Um, but overall, I wish I could have fixed that because I feel like it really takes the audience out of it. You know, we're trying to establish what he's doing. We understand that something happened in his past um, that's making him sad. So he's doing this kind of suspicious deal here. And this guy wants to know what he's doing with it. And uh, he's more just like, you know what? Don't, don't you worry about it. Why don't you just worry about your family? Kind of alludes to what we're going to get ourselves into. Come to the house. Fun little dolly move we did. Don't love this shot here. Um... I like this rather than like the typical look at the photo shot. I have him just dig under the photo and there's a scarf there. Um, maybe I should have been more adamant about showing the scarf. If you just watch the film, the scarf is around her neck at the end and it is an important puzzle piece. But I feel like a lot of people were not understanding of the ambiguous ending initially. Don't like the shot on my face because it just lit not very well and it doesn't make me look very well. But you know, that's just ego. Love this shot a lot. 
All these, I wish I could have made, like, got a, like a cooler seed. Someone actually f discovered in the comments that it was just an almond that I was using as my seed. And, uh, good on them. Good on them. Like, generally, I like all this. I mean, Amanda is in the background there, which is kind of funny when I was filming this by myself. So from a story standpoint, I have no problems with most of this. I think it looks really nice. I feel like the visual, the visuals that I used really help tell the story. I mean, we understand that this is a plant that grew from the seed. Um, the storm comes in. I try to protect it. I feel like this all worked really well, honestly. What I really want to talk about is more when we get to the end of this. And I think what I learned mostly about screenwriting when I was doing this is it's all about the end. And I thought the end was interesting when I first wrote it. When you write it something yourself before translating it to screen, it's just a much different thing, right? Like you're like, yeah, this makes sense. And when I went to make the end, I was struggled a little bit and I even pivoted at the very end when we were shooting to, I redid the entire last scene. Initially I had um, filmed the scene with a crew um, and with hair and makeup and the whole nine yards. And when I was watching the edit, I just did not like how the last scene played out. So I ended up redoing it all by myself, but maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's watch a little bit more of this. Okay, so this is basically the midpoint of the story. This is when we, you know, the goal the whole time was to bring his wife back from the dead and we discovered that he did it. She is there in her final form. And I, I really like all of this. Um, here, I feel like it all works for the story. Jump the line there from a camera movement. Didn't really like that. Um, got lucky with these fireflies. That was kind of cool. I do wish there was a little bit more of an interaction with them. You know, he, he says the line, you know, he's like, he's like, she's like, did you miss me? And he's like, I didn't get my goodbye kiss. We reveal that she's the flower. Um, visual storytelling here, I, you know, it was a good practice for me. But I feel like there could have been more that happened here. More, he just, it just, it happens so fast. He goes from kissing her to being sick. Like maybe she could have said one more line to kind of hit home what was happening. Um, but overall, I feel like this wasn't so bad for like kind of my first shot at this. Went back and filmed this later as well. Uh, we ran out of time the first day and we I got another friend, a DP, to come help me, John Dewberry, and he filmed all his handheld. I thought it turned out pretty nice. And then, so now we're past the midpoint, so we're kind of circling back to all the stuff that happened at the beginning. We're gonna circle back to, okay, he got what he wanted. He got his wife, she was dead, but now she's alive. And now he, you know, he wanted her, but now he's afraid of her. And then he tries to call his sister, who was on the voicemail from earlier. This is where it gets tricky. Now you got to explain all that stuff that went down. And so we have this wide shot here. We have the doctor or the, the brother-in-law talking. Thanks, Al, for standing in. And this close-up. And I really only had the coverage of this close-up in this wide. And if I think if I was a better actor and we knew the timing and we had done this better, we could have just stayed on that wide shot for a good portion of that, or honestly had a shot of the doctor, but I was trying to make it mostly about this character. So we're kind of cutting back and forth, um, which isn't bad, but the feedback I got when I made this from a good director friend of mine is that, so right here, we come back to the wide one more time and the close up right when he says my name. And when I'd written this in the script, I had written it the whole time where we're just holding on this close up until he says Spencer. And he w basically wakes him up out of his dream, you know, his daydream there. And like, did that happen? Did she come back to life? It, it, was he just hallucinating? Did he just fall asleep? What is going on here? I didn't like that edit. And when I got that feedback, I was like, you know what? I, I don't, I think this is the only way to make it work. But you know, hindsight is 2020. And rewatching it months later, now years later, I was like, he was totally right. Charlie, you were totally right. So I pivoted to him waking up here. Initially, this was not written in the script like this. It was just that she, they were in the room together. Um, she had cleaned up. She had come back. She had kind of shed her 
um, garden dress, basically. Kind of like that she had disappeared, perhaps, and she hid from, you know, her, his brother-in-law coming over and then was re-revealing her, herself again. And he was excited that she was there. And she's like, I, I need my goodbye kiss. And he's like, oh, okay. And he takes it. But uh, I, I, I feel like that wasn't explaining enough. I didn't actually have the scarf um, being put back on her. I feel like there was more I could have told the story with. So I redid the whole scene and I, and I shot it where he's waking up again. Um, like, like the doctor was gone, the brother-in-law was gone, and now she was back and, in his life. And this is kind of a hard shot here. This is this mirror shot. And in order to make the screen direction look right, I actually flipped the shot, even though she was actually on the opposite side when pointing into the mirror. He's like, you're leaving. She's like, I need my goodbye kiss. I think at this point, I wanted the audience to be trying to put together that um, she was real. And I think that maybe by having him wake up now, which was not initially in the script, that it kind of does this cliche thing that like short films always do, which is like, they woke up and it was a, it was all just a dream. Well, I didn't want it to be that way. I just more wanted to allude to the dream of it all, that he was in a fog from, you know, the poison that he had gotten from her when he kissed her basically she you know we thought that maybe he died but then he had survived but where was she and now she is back and she's ready to be alive again and she doesn't she doesn't really care if he's along for the ride or not but if you watch it through without me explaining all that i think it gets a little vague and confusing and i regretted that much afterwards i did the ambiguous ending which you know, now that I know about screenwriting more, it's all about the end. I think ambiguous endings can be good if they are trying to sit with the theme of the story. But for this one, I did an ambiguous ending because I thought it would be more mysterious for a short film. And now I don't really believe in that. I think ambiguous endings are probably a pretty bad idea um, overall, unless it makes sense for the story, which did not have any. It didn't make sense for the story at all. Um, like if you're going to bring the girl back from the dead do it. It's more fun. It's more exciting. Show what happens. Maybe even show him dying. I don't know. So I think people did not understand the ending. I think people liked the cinematography and the mood and the tone and all that, but I don't think people understood the ending. So what I've done is I decided to break out, shot all this on the Pocket 6K, but I broke out just an FX30 and went back and fixed some of these things. So we can scroll through here. There's nothing I really could have fixed in the first half. It's once we get past the midpoint where the story really starts to take off where I've made some tweaks. Um, obviously, I couldn't refilm the scene outside here. But so it goes in. And so I've tweaked this a little bit. I have it where now. We have this wide shot. We have it stay on the close up. Now, you're probably still a little fuzzy right now. It's just a side effect. It's very dangerous. You have to tell me, where did you find this plant? Spencer. Now, you're probably still a little fuzzy right now. It's just a side effect. It's very dangerous. You have to tell me, where did you find this plant? Spencer. And I feel like that, that just like tonally hits better. Going back to the wide, loses all of the tension that's being built from the close up. Charlie was right, so I've tweaked that. Such an easy fix, and it's so crazy how, and that, that's why you do these experiments. That's why you make these films like this. And I believe in that, and I think um, there was a lot of self-conscious when I put out all of these films when I made them over the past few years, but I really believed in this idea of practice, practice, practice. And that's 
Filmmaking is hard because a lot of people can practice and then not, you know, you can just not show anyone the film. That's fine. But I'm able to use this YouTube space to get feedback on what I did and improve myself, get better at what I'm doing. And so I, you know, I dealt with the humility all the way. Like this isn't the best short film ever by any means, but it was something that helped me learn about filmmaking. And I'm super glad that I made it. I could have just written this, made it, not shown it to anyone and never would have had that experience and got that feedback and be able to see it later. So I'm really glad that I did that. Um, and I think you should too go make stuff. I, I, I can't stress that enough. You know how hard it is to make a film? I've been doing this for like 15 years and to me it's still pretty hard to make videos and films and telling stories. It's still to this day a hard task. It's a, you know, there's that saying, it's a miracle that a movie even gets made. I totally agree with that. So these, these little even eight minute short films, you know, I, I put them on a pedestal. I really, really want them to be better than they were. But, I, you know, in the end, I think I was shooting for the stars to get the moon, you know, and, that, and that's fine. So I learned a lot. So then we let this last uh, bit of the film play out. But... Now, one shot. I believe adding the one shot of the plant remnants on the ground in the hallway. We've seen this hallway before earlier in the film. It's no surprise. It matches the same color as this last shot, this kind of ambiguous shot I had in there of the backyard. Just kind of showing a time passage from the night before. And that maybe would, you know, she kind of shed that off of her. I think that one shot would have saved the ending of this film. I think that that would have made the film less ambiguous and there'd be less confusion for the audience. And this really is a great lesson to be learned. This is a visual medium. And it, so I, obviously I learned that the end is one of the most important parts because if you have a terrible movie, and you've probably heard this before in other screenwriting things, if you have a terrible movie, but the ending is awesome, uh, that will save the movie. You can have two thirds of the movie not be as good as everything else, but if the ending is good, people will leave with that. That's what's going to be in their head. That feeling is going to be what they remember. I think this one shot, like if I just would have put that shot in, I even wrote this shot in initially and I was going to shoot it and I was like, ah, just, it's too on the nose. And it's like, no, that's what a story is. Wrap it up. Tell the story. Don't let it be ambiguous. That's just, I, I honestly feel like an, an, an ambiguous ending is just a cop out. And I think I, I did it and I am not afraid to say it. So that one shot to me puts a little bow on the end. Like she was there. She just shed her uh, other skin and now she's a human now she's gonna go out in the world and who knows what she's gonna do next she leaves she kisses him most likely he's going to be poisoned again most likely he's dead at this point that can be ambiguous like what happened to him it's a short film that part can be ambiguous and, and so i just filmed that i just grabbed an fx30 and i i just filmed it in my hallway just a few minutes ago just grabbed some vines outside and I was able to fix it. Five minutes of work was able to fix the entire film, in my opinion. And you can tell me otherwise. You know, watch the film. I am actually might even re-upload this if you want to re if you want to watch this cut. And tell me, what, do, you, do you think it fixes the film overall when you watch it? So I have no shame. We can sit here and roast the film. We can talk about things that uh, were not good about it. Uh, to a productive level, right? I made these things to get more experience and to kind of do trial and error. All from a productive standpoint. I'm not here to um make something bad just for the sake of making something bad i tried i honestly tried my hardest at this time so what this was three years ago i've come a long way in three years you could see that over the channel i'm sure maybe not um like i said this is kind of one of my more favorite films out of the like four or five that i made over the past three years but yeah i think it was a good learning exercise and maybe hopefully something that i showed in this uh would help you out as well maybe if there's a couple little nuggets for you um, let me know in the comments below what you think of the uh, new cut. And I just encourage you to go make some short films if you want to get into making movies. Um, definitely don't go right for the movie. Do not go for the feature film first. There's so much to be learned. You might as well fail hard. That way you can build yourself up better.
Okay, well until next time guys, I'm Spencer Sakurai, and before we go, I do want to talk about the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to present your work online. Start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up. Maybe you want to start an online store to sell your photography or other products. Squarespace has the built-in functionality to get one of those up and running quickly, and I've actually been using Squarespace to run my online stores for almost a decade now. Make checkout seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools, accept credit cards, PayPal, and Apple Pay, and in eligible countries, offer customers the option to buy now and pay later with Afterpay and Clearpay. And of course, if you're like me, you're probably looking to build a portfolio, which Squarespace has tons of features for that very thing. You can even create private galleries for client work using these tools. So if you're looking for a home for your work, you can do that with Squarespace. Click the link in the description to get 10% off, and I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video.